guys, my name is Emma from Journey to the Organized Home. In today's video, I'm gonna be organizing under my sink and just going through the process with you. I'm gonna be showing you the containers that I bought and used, how I labeled them, as well as how I've organized everything. And I'm also gonna be showing you a couple of the products that I keep under there that I think absolutely everybody should have under their sink. So as they say, without further ado, let's get into it. So these are the containers I'm gonna be using for my project today. Now it did take me a really long time to decide what sort of containers I wanted to buy for all of the storage in my house really, particularly under the sink storage. Now the reason for that is you can get some super nice storage options out there, but they can get really, really expensive really quickly. So I wanted to find some storage that was nice, but also at a reasonable price. So the ones that I've settled on are these ones here firstly. So these are from Box Sweden is the brand and these are from My Deal. Now I got these three here, I'm anticipating I'll need at least three for under the laundry sink. So I bought six in total and these large boxes here were $39 for six. So that makes it $6.50 for each of these boxes, which seems like a lot, but realistically in the grand scheme of things, that's actually not too bad. So from the same place from my deal, I got all of these boxes from my deal. So this is the slightly smaller size container, also box Sweden, also clear exactly the same. It's just a slightly smaller size. So again, I bought six of these. I'm thinking that I'll probably only need to use maybe a couple under the sink. I'm still not exactly sure how I'm going to organize everything. So these ones I've got six of as well, and these were $37 for six. So they're $6.15 each. And then these ones I really like. These are also box Sweden and they're slightly different. So these ones are, firstly, they're stackable. So you can stack them one on top of the other. And the other thing is they have this insert here, which is like an adjustable divider tray. So you can put it in here and have a large section over here at the front and a small section at the back, or you can put it smack bang in the middle there, or you can put it here, or you can just leave it out altogether. So I just thought this would be really handy for under the sink to just help group items, you know, depending on how big they are or how many they are. So I thought this was a really good little addition as well. So I'm not sure exactly which ones I'm gonna use or how I'm gonna configure them at this stage, but I've got these ones here to play with. So I'm gonna pull everything out of the cupboard and then just do a little bit playing around and see how I go. So guys, this is what the cupboard looks like at the moment. So as you can see, it's not super dirty under here or anything. We've just moved in, so it's not gross yet, but everything is just kind of sitting where it was placed. There's no real order to anything. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna pull all of this out, get it all organized, and hopefully it'll all be looking much better when it's, everything has been put into its rightful container into its proper spot. So here we go. So as I'm pulling everything out, I'm just going to organize everything into groups of how I think I'm going to sort them in the containers. as well so I wanted to keep a little bit of empty space between them just so that they're nice and easy to pull out and also this brand and have this big label on it but these ones are super easy to get off this is a silly thing but this is actually important to me when buying something so in case it's important to you as well these are those super easy labels to rip off <laughs>
So guys, this is how much better it looks even just putting everything into containers and just grouping everything together. Now I just wanted to explain a little bit how I've actually organized this. So some of this might just be common sense, but not everybody knows everything. So I've just decided to put these finished dishwashing tablets here right next to my dishwasher. So basically just making everything as close to the area that it's going to be used for as possible. Now, I don't like to decant my dishwashing tablets. It's just not something I like to do. I know it's super popular on Instagram and everything like that, but don't organize your under your sink just to make it look nice for Instagram. If you are trying to stay organized, you really need to keep systems in place that work for you and don't just look nice. Looking nice is great, but if it doesn't work for you, then you're not gonna stay organized. So here I've just got the bin bags. So everything in my cupboard here is really easy to grab. I don't have anything in here that's put away in drawers or anything that has a lid on it because I like to be able to see absolutely everything at a glance and I like to be able to grab everything super easily. So I can just grab this like, you know, if I'm washing the dishes. And so I put this right under the sink here. So if I do need to get a scrubber or a new scrubber head or anything like that, I can just reach underneath and grab it straight away. And I've also got the little container here with a couple of random things that we don't use so often, like these cloths. We only get a new one of these every so often. And then there's a couple of other things in here, like a pair of gloves and just the Mortine and Citronella. So things that we don't use quite as much here. This is a few cleaning items. So everything here, I like to be able to see everything, like I said, so I know how much of everything there is. I've just noticed this is low, but um, I don't want to keep that at the front. So I'm just going to have to keep an eye on that. And so this one here is stuff that we use relatively often. And I've kept this one here at the front because that is the one that we use the most. And I've tried not to put anything next to it to make it really nice and easy to grab out and put back. Now this is the other thing that we use fairly often. This is like just a freshening spray. It's basically just vanilla essence and alcohol, but it's a really nice thing to spray in your recycling bin or in your fridge. It's just like a disinfectant and it just makes things smell nice. It's not very good at cutting through grease, but this is a super nice thing just to have on hand. Now another random product that I just wanted to tell people about that I have under my sink is this one here. So this is nifty. This is really powerful on cutting through grease. So I know people normally just use like a normal Ajax spray and wipe multi-purpose, but if you really need a degreaser, I can't recommend this enough. It's really, really good. And it even works in getting grease off stainless steel. It's really something I recommend if you do have a lot of grease, you know, around your kitchen, in the cooking area, that kind of thing. It's super, super handy. And so just up here, we've got kind of like sanitary things. So we've got some disinfectant spray, just some hand sanitizer, that kind of thing. And then here I've actually got like a fairly empty container. So I've just got this big thing of hand soap here at the moment. And I might put some other things in the back there if I find I've got use for it. But at the moment, this is here at the front, super easy to grab as well. So now that I've organized everything into containers, I'm going to label my containers. Now you can get so many beautiful labels out there, but today I'm going to be doing a budget DIY option. So I'm going to be making my own labels using Canva. It's a super easy program to use, even like an idiot like me can use it. So if I can do it, you can definitely do it as well. It's free to use unless you want to go for the premium version, but the free version is totally great. I use it all of the time. So once I've made my design in Canva, I'm gonna get the thickest and best quality packing tape that I can find. And I'm gonna put that over the labels on my containers so that it's got a nice shiny finish. It's waterproof in case anything gets on there. And it still looks really nice with the design that I have made and I have chosen. So you can always buy the labels. There are so many nice options. Like I said, you can buy labels online. The label code is some really nice ones. If you are lucky enough to have a Cricut, you can make these labels yourself, some really nice vinyl labels. Otherwise, you can go to like Kmart, Target, those kinds of places, and you can get pre-made labels that have like laundry and pantry and, you know, under sink items on them as well. So that's just another option. There's so many options, but today I've just gone with the DIY. So it helps to use a really nice sharp pair of scissors for this as well. So now I've got my little label here. I'm just going to pop it onto the box here. So that's what it's going to look like. So another really good thing about doing your own labels is you can get your labels to say whatever you want them to say. So I would highly doubt that any of the pre-bought labels that I would get would say scrubbers on them. 
but you could get them custom made, but obviously this costs a bit more, but you can definitely do whatever you want when you're making the labels yourself. So scrubbers, I know what that means. That's what I wanted to say. And so DIY, the way to go for me. And so basically I'm gonna get this packing tape and I'm gonna pull off a bit. And then I'm gonna cut the ends off, trying not to dirty with my fingerprints too much of the middle that's gonna go on the label. So just so that both edges are really nice and straight. So I'll cut that off like this. And so now I'm gonna need two pieces of sticky tape to do this. I'm just gonna come from the top, make sure it's nice and straight, and I'm just gonna pop it straight down like that. So that's what it looks like with the label on. So I think that looks pretty good considering I did it all myself. Now the sticky tape, hopefully it gets a little bit easier to put this down without having all those wrinkles, but honestly, it's going under the sink. So honestly, who cares? So guys, this is what the cupboard looks like all organized with the containers and with all of the labels on as well. So you can see here, super easy design, just bang them up on Canva really, really quickly, print them off, cut them out and stuck them on with some sticky tape. Now, I admittedly didn't do the best job with the sticky tape, but it's under the sink, so I don't really care that much. And because the boxes are clear, you can't really notice anyway. So this is just much better than it was when I started. It wasn't awful when I started because I just moved into this house, but I know how bad under sinks can get. So I definitely recommend doing stuff that works for you. You can get some really nice drawers that you could put in here as well. So it all depends on what you're kind of working with with your sink. So some people have the sink that's right in the middle with like a stem down here. I do suggest getting a couple of different size containers and also getting a few extra containers just so that you've got a little bit of room to work with and you can kind of figure out what's going to work best for you. So if you do want to, you can hang things on the inside of your door if you're organizing. Now I decided against it because A, I don't like things to hang and like dangle when I'm opening the door. And also because there's obviously not a lot of space in between the door and where I want everything nice and close so that I can reach everything. So, so like I said before, do what works for you and fuck all the rest. So I feel like the main thing to keep in mind if you are organizing under your sink or any area in your house really is to do what works for you and don't just do what looks good at the time. Because if you really are trying to stay organized, it really helps to have systems in place that you can stick to and things that work for you. And if you can try to implement these things from the outset, you'll be able to keep those things in place for much longer than if you just make everything look nice so that you can take a photo and stick it on Instagram. That's it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've watched a couple of my videos and you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please give me a like just so I know what sort of content you guys enjoy. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.